How y'all doing today? Good. I'm going to do my interpretation of Galatians chapter 3, verses 2 through 5. Verse 2. This only what I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? This what I learn of you. Paul's saying, let me ask you this one question. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? He's asking the Galatians, did you receive the Holy Spirit by trying to keep the Jewish laws? Of course not. So Paul says, for the Holy Spirit came upon you after you heard about Christ and trusted him to save you. As Paul questioned their experience in verse 1, asking them if they'd been bewitched, he's now demanding a solid answer for where and what they believe to be true. And how do they know so? As today, as then, most recollect an experience in suggesting they're in Christ. They reason their experience with truth. Doesn't the word of God reason truth to experience? I think so. I'll tell you. Everyone's experience is different. So these Galatians are showing symptoms of the way people play church today. That church attendance saves. Reciting creeds and irreverently taking the Lord's Supper is going to save someone. So Paul here is demanding an explanation. Who and what does your salvation rest upon? The receiving of the Spirit to Christ crucified in faith? Or ritual observances? And self-performing performing, uh, Jewish law-keeping. Not eating shellfish. Or not getting out your stuck sheep in the fence on the Sabbath. Shabbat. Or being circumcised. Salvation for them, and for you and I, is trusting our being as a way of life. A way of life. It's a lifestyle. To Christ, who was put on the cross, the tree, and rose again, and to receive the presence of the Spirit, which is God's gift through faith, not works. It is a way of life. So Paul is asking them to reflect, what was your experience? Because the gospel I preached is a miss in your character. So here are the questions. I'm going to read verse 1 and 2 again. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only what I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? So Paul's saying, are y'all supposing y'all could be beginning with the Spirit of God, but be completely imperfected by external acts, keeping dietary laws and such, and going back to this me, 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 I make my own way law? Sure sounds like it. Let's go to Romans chapter 8 verse 9. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of this. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. This is Paul speaking to the gathering church congregates in Ephesus in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation and whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that holy spirit of promise 
So let's go here to question number three that Paul has for them. Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Paul's question here is, if the Holy Spirit is the resident within your conversion that brought you to Christ after hearing the gospel of him, are you going back to pedal to the law, which was given to control your behavior and to keep you from being a heathen? Apparently so, they are. So Paul's next question, verse 4. Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? These Galatian Christians, as others assembling in this time, were being persecuted and harassed for embracing Christianity. My opinion, by their own locals, the Jewish locals, So now many of Paul's converts through Christ were abandoning the taught gospel for their peace persecutors' principles. So in a sense, the Galatians were making a peace treaty with them, like, let's get along. Uh, we'll keep the 260-some laws and we'll coexist. So they denied the cross. They denied the crucified Christ as their substitute, yielding to these teachers of Judaism. So the ones that suffered in their supposed conversion to Christ, their crucified Redeemer, their suffering was in vain. Turning to that which is in and of man, from man, and which lies and the sole efforts of man. So let's go to the next question here that Paul has for them in verse 5. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? So Paul's the one that ministereth to them, the Spirit, and he worked miracles among them. Did he do this by the works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith? You see, in the first chapter, Paul was harassed by the Judaizers. He wasn't one of the original 12 apostles. You remember? They called him a Johnny come lately. So Paul's reminding them, I came to you in foreign, hostile territory with this gospel that I preached. I preached through the Spirit, the Word of God. I performed miracles among all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. The works of the law had not a thing to do with your experience. The apostles had gifts of healing. They raised the dead and they had sign gifts. Those were the marks of the 12 apostles of Christ. I have those same apostolic gifts. I was hand chosen by the Alpha and Omega. And now you're rejecting the chief cornerstone. Your foundations collapsed. For you make your own way now. It's evident. He sees it through their character. They're making their own way. I say it all the time. We can't make our own way. So Christ redeemed humanity from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for us. Well, he became a curse for them, you see? And now they're making their own way for eternity. Till next time.